hey, GED students, I had a student, Mary, who was working on the order of operations lesson on the GED math crash course, and she decided to tackle the advanced level practice. So just an FYI, a lot of the problems on the advanced level practice are actually more challenging than what you would have to do without a calculator on the GED. Uh, but they do make very good practice uh, for testing your order of operations skills. And this is one like that. This actually could come up on the GED, things that look like this. But if they did, it would be in the calculator section. So you'd be able to do this with your calculator. However, I did just want students who are at the advanced level to see that this is just one big ugly order of operations example. And as of such, we can simplify it using the order of operations. So let's go ahead and take a look. According to the order of operations, we're supposed to do anything with groupings first. And there are a lot of groupings going on here. Remember that the top and the bottom of fractions form natural groupings. So like this is a group here. Um, remember that the insides of things, like the insides of radicals, form groupings. So like this is a grouping there. Um, so that would be a good place to start with our groupings. Uh, that is what I will do first here. So I'll just leave the rest of the stuff out there. Now, those of you guys who are into shortcuts, you might know that I could be doing more than I am right now. That's okay. I just don't want to overcomplicate things. So I'll leave this alone. And I'll start tackling what's inside that grouping. So negative 3, see how it's in parentheses to the second power? That means I'm taking all of negative 3 and I'm squaring it or I'm multiplying that number by itself. Okay, so a negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 3 is 9, so I get a 9 from that. Now, I can do the exponents inside my grouping, since exponents are the second step to the order of operations. I can also do the multiplication, and you might be able to say, well, I thought I was supposed to wait to do the multiplication. Yeah, except for, see how this minus sign here is separating this multiplication out? Since there's a minus sign between the two pieces, they're not really connected. I can just go ahead and do the multiplication. It doesn't affect the other piece. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to basically go negative 4 times 2 times negative 2. Well, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and if I were to times that by another negative 2, I would get positive 16. So I get positive 16. And that whole thing is going to be over, and 2 times 2, that's grouped as well. So I can handle that separately. 2 times 2 is 4. Great. Now, I have most of my grouping done, but there's a little bit more to do, that 9 plus 16. So I will go ahead and I will do that. I really want to simplify this thing as well. You guys, I'm so lazy. Mathematicians are so lazy. Here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that this opposite of negative 3 is separated from everything else with, by a minus sign. Because it's held off by a subtraction, subtraction is the last thing I do, it, it's not being affected by the other things. So I know I can just go ahead and do it. So I will. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. From that, I'm going to subtract eventually, last step, the square root of, okay, inside that grouping, I can deal with that grouping. 9 plus 16, of course, is just 25. And that whole thing is going to be over, over 4. Oh, this is looking nicer. Okay, now that being said, you might be wondering, well, what do I do now? Remember, after your groupings are done, you're supposed to do any exponents and not only are little floating numbers exponents, so are their inverses, the radicals. And so that's what I should do next. I should deal with this, the square root of 25. Well, the square root means what number times itself. So what number times itself equals 25? Well, of course, it's 5. So the square root of 25 is 5. And I'll drop down everything I haven't used yet. I haven't used the 3, the minus, and of course, I haven't used the fact that it's over 4. Now you might say, what am I supposed to do next? Aren't I supposed to multiply and divide before I add subtract? So shouldn't I do the divide for now? And yes, we multiply and divide before we add and subtract unless we have a grouping. Remember that the top and bottom of a fraction naturally make a grouping. So I'm actually going to deal with the grouping up top before I deal with the dividing by 4. Okay, so 3 minus 5, of course, is negative 2. I have 3 and I take away 5, I'm at negative 2. And now divide that by 4. Now, it's not going to divide perfectly. Negative 2 does not divide by 
4 perfectly. So all I'm going to do is leave it as a fraction, but final fraction answer should be reduced. 2 and 4 have a common factor. They have a common factor of 2. I'll divide it out of both of them. And my final answer then is negative 1 half. And you might say, Kate, that is so ferocious. I cannot stand that. I think it's really awful, and I would agree with you, but like I said, if this were to come up on the GED, you would be able to type the entire thing into your calculator. So I think I will show you that next. So like I said, when these come up on the GED, these types of expressions actually show up when you're using one of the formulas from the formula sheet known as the quadratic formula. And if that happens, you can use your TI to simplify it. As long as you've written the problem down right, you can type it in just this way into your calculator. So let me show you. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're in the right mode. You need to be in math print mode for these long complex expressions to work. So I'm going to hit the mode button. And what I want to make sure is that the word math print is in black. Now, Mine's already in black because I always keep it in black. But if yours isn't, you're just going to go ahead and arrow down to that line and then right over the word math print. And once you're blinking on math print, you press enter to select. Now you're in math print mode. It's going to type and write answers like a mathematician would. Okay, and now we'll just press clear to get out of that screen. Okay, now I want one big ugly fraction. And so the first thing I'm going to do to start is my fraction bar. Awesome. And then I want the opposite or negative of negative 3. You can type exactly what you see. Okay, so I see down here by enter is the negative key. That's the opposite. And I even have parentheses here of negative 3. 3, close parentheses. Now be careful, this next minus sign is between things. It's between, it has a number in front, the negative 3, and it has numbers in the back. And so this one is actually a minus. I need to use a minus button for that. And now I need the square root symbol. This weird kind of check mark house looking thing. You can see it um, right here in on the left-hand side of your calculator in green about towards the middle here in this left-hand column. And anytime you want something in green, you have to hit the green button first. So I'm going to hit second, and then that x squared button will give me the square root. And again, if I see parentheses, I'm going to put in the parentheses. So open up parentheses, negative 3, close parentheses. And now to get the exponent of 2, you can just press that x squared button. Minus, I use minus now because it's between numbers, minus 4, uh, open parentheses, 2, close parentheses, open parentheses, negative 2, close parentheses. And then now how do I get to the bottom of the fraction? Well, you just arrow until you're blinking down there. And there I am. Oh, I arrowed one too many times. Let me arrow back. There I am. And I can go 2, parentheses, 2, close parentheses, and oh my goodness, it's way easier in your calculator. There it is, negative one half. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.